head of the Department of Biomedical Engineering. This department is now one and a half years old, so it's, a very, it's the newest department in the university. Actually, the university before this had not created a new department for about 20 years. So uh, we've all had a process of learning how to create a new department. But the reason we have created the department is because biomedical engineering has come of age. It is now considered one of uh, moving into being a mainstream discipline within engineering. So uh, civil engineering was, you could consider the first, and there's also electrical, mechanical. But uh, biomedical engineering, while it brings those together, it has some specific qualities of its own that are worth having a degree for. So what I want to do is to take you through why you should consider doing biomedical engineering here at the University of Melbourne and give you some examples of the sort of things that, that you would learn about. So first of all, engineering at the University of Melbourne is ranked number one in Australia and number 27 in the world. And that, so um, we, we, also, we also offer what we call the Melbourne Advantage which is a higher level qualification that's recognized globally. And specifically, we, our Master of Engineering degrees have accreditation in Europe. So we're the only Australian university that has that full accreditation in Europe at present. Other universities are now applying for it, though, as well. Uh, so our, we're keen for you to be inspired by our research that we do. We, we are focused a lot on research-led teaching, which is really means that we teach you what is at the cutting edge of the field. We're industry connected as well. We've been ranked by the Shanghai Zhao Tong rankings as the number seven university in the world for graduate employability. And we have a very industry aligned curriculum. We have industry coming in for most of our subjects. Uh, we have industry relevant workshops and laboratories as well as, as um, internship opportunities. We're internationally recognized, as I said. We have both the Washington Accord accreditation, which is the one that all Australian universities have for engineering, as well as EURACE, which is the European accreditation. And uh, while we have a bachelor and then master's program, we focus on engineering right from the very beginning. And uh, we... Uh, from, from day one within an undergraduate degree until the last day of a master's degree, there's engineering all the way through. So biomedical engineering itself has actually recently been ranked number one in Australia and for, for research and 42nd in the world uh, for research. Uh, we're very pleased with that. There are no rankings for teaching, uh, but part of what has contributed to that is our research into bionic eye, low-cost prosthetics, brain-computer interfaces, and biomaterials and tissue engineering, 3D printing, and so on. What is biomedical engineering? It's probably the most common question I get asked at open day. Well, it's trying to help meet the health challenges of the future. We, we want to use engineering principles, maths, science, and design to solve health problems, specifically health problems for humans. We design a new medical device or solve a clinical problem it's, it's becoming especially important as the population ages that more and more people are living longer and longer and having more and more ailments that perhaps engineering can help to solve. Yeah. So biomedical engineering brings together the disciplines of medicine, science, and engineering. And so it's a, it's a broad degree, but we also offer the opportunity to really specialize in some particular areas that I'm going to show you in a moment. One of these is biosignals which is understanding the electrical systems of the body. Reading brain, brain waves to help. So could you please take seats if, if you can? In the, there's, there's one here and there's a couple on the side. Um, yeah, just for health and safety reasons, we need people to be not so much on the, on the stairs, thanks. We also have uh, the control of robotic limbs. For people who have paralysis, we can record brain signals and use that to control um, a prosthesis. Uh, the bionic eye has been a, a very uh, important development that has come out of the University of Melbourne and our partners, the University of New South Wales and other research institutes, where we're able to capture an image with a camera and then directly stimulate the optic nerve of people who have lost their sight through to, by ret retinitis pigmentosa or age-related macular degeneration. Uh, oh. 
Hopefully this isn't going to take too long. <laughs> Biomechanics is another different area, and that's trying to understand how the, the body works in terms of the musculoskeletal system. Uh, you can see there an example of a model that some, that some researchers and students have created uh, to understand how the, the, whole, the leg system works, in particular to un trying to understand why people get injured, and if, if, are there ways that we can help um, prevent those injuries, in particular anterior cruciate, cruciate ligament injuries, or ACL injuries, which are very common um, in AFL, as well as implant development. So uh, my colleagues David Ackland and Peter Lee developed an artificial jaw joint for people who've, who've lost their joint, and that, that has been uh, really successfully applied now in, in um, over 30 people, and a company has been formed to commercialize that. Rehabilitation engineering also is how, how best can we understand the difficulties, especially that children have, in terms of uh, development, and how can we help them in the best way possible by providing um, orthotic systems or possibly to uh, b better training methods for them. Biomaterials is another very different area where we have these... Uh, nano sort of materials. We can create structures in which stem cells can, can be placed and to differentiate into different types of tissue to replace, replace lost tissue or to repair uh, damaged tissue. And bio nanotechnology, especially looking at can we target uh, cancer cells with, with toxic chemicals that are encased in such a way that they will only affect the cancer cells and they won't affect the rest of the body. And finally, clinical engineering is one of the, the main areas in which there is a lot of um, work for biomedical engineers. Hospitals, biomedical engineering departments are growing as there's more and more technology that is being incorporated into hospitals. <laughs> and there's so many others. And what's most exciting is that some have not even been thought of yet. So we're very keen to train you not just in how to deal with existing systems, but to be ready for dealing with the systems that have that have yet to be invented. As I mentioned earlier, we have a strong focus on industry and employment. So students have the opportunity to undertake 10 to 15 weeks of professional work experience, and they get course credit for doing that. Uh, and that's to help facilitate the students being able to get that experience. There's other ways to connect with industry. The Industry Capstone Project is a final year project in the Master of Engineering degree. And you can either choose to work with an academic or to work in industry uh, for that. Creating innovative engineering is a new subject introduced last year that where students coming into the degree learn how to work with major companies to try to solve some of their problems. Biodesign innovation, I'll talk a little bit about, more about myself. It's, a, it's my, own, my own project and I've been very excited about it. And uh, a science, technology, engineering and medicine and um, maths mentoring program as well. So we offer career building events, employability workshops, industry events, uh, just to help students connect more and more with industry. The clubs and societies help as well. There's, for students in a bachelor's degree, there's pre-eng for those who are interested in doing engineering. And also we have, in, in particular, uh, MOOBS, which is uh, a, strange, a strange name uh, there. That's... Um, the Melbourne University Biomedical Engineering Society, a very active student group that puts on barbecues and fun events as well as creating industry events and so on. And the in in Endeavour industry is where students showcase um, their projects to, to the world. The Biodesign Innovation subject is one that I developed along with the Melbourne Business School uh, two years ago, where students develop a concept for a medical device and they also develop a business plan to go along with that. And by working with MBA students and also clinicians from hospitals, they can make sure they're solving real problems, uh, real needs. They focus on the needs before they think of the concepts to solve those needs, because as engineers, we can have a tendency to have a gadget and then try to find something to solve with it. So um, 
out of the nine teams that have been through this program so far, there's seven startup companies that have been formed. And Navi Medical Technologies is one of the most successful. They're developing uh, a system to help um, neonatal intensivists to insert uh, catheters into the belly button of uh, newborn babies to help deliver drugs to them. Uh, and the, it, it's sort of an obvious place that you could, you could enter into the blood system. Uh, Stelect uh, is a team from last year that have developed a system for optimizing the length of a stent for a coronary, coronary stents. And they actually won the MedTech, MedTech's Got Talent Startup Competition, uh, which we're quite excited about, <laughs> out of over 100 entries. So in terms of employment outcomes, there, there is definitely a growing market in biomedical engineering. Our cohort is fairly small, but it, it is growing. So we have about uh, 70 or so that graduate each year, much smaller than the other disciplines. There are perhaps proportionally less jobs, but it's definitely a growing industry. And, and I, th I think that um, the rate of job growth is, is exceeding the other, the other disciplines of engineering at present. Uh, the entrepreneurship and innovation system also allows students to consider the possibility of being entrepreneurs and creating their own companies rather than just going in and getting jobs. So here's um, a bit of a crowded slide, but it talks about the biomedical engineering career options. So the, the main pathways are through the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Biomedicine. However, there, you can do any undergraduate degree to get into the Master of Engineering. Uh, the two possibilities for the Master of Engineering uh, is the biomedical and biomedical with business. So the biomedical one uh, offers sort of the most flexibility in terms of choosing electives and so on. Uh, but the biomedical with business is becoming more and more popular as people see they're likely to be getting into management roles and, and so on. But the different sort of industries around hospitals and biotechnology, medical device companies, uh, even in petrochemicals and pharmaceuticals, there's a need for people who are wanting to consider human factors in terms of the way their companies develop devices or, or develop drugs and so on. Uh, some examples of technology. So, so the, these are companies that our students have definitely gone to. Uh, Agilent Technologies has been a large employer. Uh, many of our students have also been going into IBM, principally IBM Research, uh, as they develop their, their sort of healthcare systems. Omics Solutions is the company that was formed with the, the, to, to commercialize that jaw joint um, that I told you about before. But the different sorts of job roles, well, research and design is a key role for engineers. And definitely within the biomedical engineering field, there's a need to gen generate new intellectual property, new products, uh, and improve products. You may have heard of the graduate degree packages. So we're wanting to make sure that we highlight this as it's a new, uh, a new offering for high achieving students uh, through VTech, where students can apply for both the bachelor degree and the master degree. And it guarantees a Commonwealth supported place into the master of engineering if you pass your undergraduate degree. You don't have to go through this graduate degree package, but here, here are the options. So you can see there, Bachelor of Biomedicine, Master of Engineering. And so if you wanted to do biomedical engineering, you would do the bioengineering systems major in biomedicine, and then biomedical or biomedical with business in the master's degree. Similarly, um, Bachelor of Science is also a preferred pathway because it has the bioengineering systems major. Uh, but you can also go through Bachelor of Design and Bachelor of Commerce, provided you sort of carefully select the subjects that, that, you, that you would need. What if you don't get an ATAR of 96, which is the entry requirement for the graduate degree packages? Well, that, that's what everybody's been doing so far. Okay, so that, that is, you, you would just choose an undergraduate degree. You need to do reasonably well at that undergraduate degree. So it's achieve a weighted average of 65%, which, is, which means that you have done, you've done better than scrape through. Um, okay, so uh, what, we, what we feel is that Students who scrape through in their undergraduate degree are probably going to struggle in the master's degree, and maybe they should be considering something else. But uh, the 65, there's, it's about over 75% of students get 65%, and then um, and then exit to employment. So those those are the two pathways up there. So the entry requirements, there's a. 
basically, they're the entry requirements for each of those different uh, undergraduate degrees. So I, I want to make sure we leave some time, good time for questions, so I won't dwell on that. But uh, make sure, if you are concerned about entry requirements, that you go to the desks that are talking specifically about the, um, the, the bachelor degree entry requirements. Okay, so to choose biomedical engineering at Melbourne, you would choose an undergraduate degree. Those are the two, uh, the, the ones that have the, the best pathways through into Master of Engineering. But of course, you, you could do, you could do a, uh, an arts degree if you want. Make sure that you just do some maths and science in first year, and that's, that's what you'll need to apply into the Master of Engineering. You'll just need a bit more time to complete the Master of Engineering if you do it that way. And then you can choose between the Master of Engineering Biomedical or the Master of Engineering Biomedical <coughs> with Business. Here's an example of the Bachelor of Biomedicine program with the Bioengineering Systems major. So I really want to highlight this one. If you're thinking of doing biomedicine, is that there, there is a need to choose a different set of subjects from a standard biomedicine degree in the first year, and specifically because you need to pick up calculus to and linear algebra, which is higher level maths than is normally required for biomedicine. So that's basically, uh, calculus two is sort of taking specialist, specialist maths plus. Okay, if you, haven't, if you haven't done specialist maths, you'll also need to do calculus one, but then uh, cal you'll definitely need to do calculus two and linear algebra as they lead into engineering mathematics. If you choose this selection of subjects in the biomedicine degree, you're still open, it's still open to do any other major. You don't have to do the bioengineering systems major, but it does give you the option of doing bioengineering. And then you can see here we start to pick up biomedical physics and computation. And then down here we, we look at the biomechanics, the biotransport, which is the biomaterial sort of area, circuits and systems, which is biosignals. And then it all comes together in a sort of project based subject where you get to build something yourselves. The Master of Engineering goes through uh, a lot of subjects that we require for accreditation, like looking at the regulatory environment of, and bioinstrumentation. But there's, there's also an, an anatomy and physiology. But there, there's a lot of electives that you can choose, so you can specialize in those biosignals, biomechanics, biomaterials, sorts of different areas that you're interested in. And then down at the end, you've got the, um, the capstone project, which is a sort of a research project or a project with industry and a design project. Um, or you can substitute biodesign innovation for both of those. And sort of one subject replaces the two if you do biodesign innovation. Here's one of our star students. He's, he actually is one of, one of the ones who created a company coming out of biodesign innovation, Will Abbott. Um, the Biomedic with Business was uh, developed with, by engineering with the Melbourne Business School to bring together technical and business skills. And so you can see there from the, the subjects, that the five subjects that you need to do in the with business degree, um, the, the sort of areas they cover in terms of engineering management, contracts, marketing, economic analysis, and, and strategy. So Commonwealth supported places are available to um, citizens, permanent residents, New, New Zealand re um, residents. And that's where the Australian government subsidizes the course. And, and also, you don't need to pay it back until after you're, you're obtaining a, a, a wage. But we also offer a number of scholarships to help, to help disadvantaged students, uh, to encourage students to do engineering as well as rewarding the really high-achieving students 